Hi, Artie here from Bar Mills, and we're going to be doing a page page on one of our newest kits at this point as of March in 2022, and it is our downtown garage. Now, many of you may be familiar with this particular building, either from the fact that it was originally released, at least in HO scale, as part of our cigar corner diorama that we did a few years back. But in this case, we also are making the kit both in O scale and N scale in addition to HO. It was originally inspired by a building that George Sellius built on his Franklin in South Manchester. Now, the fact of it is we have three different scales and three different sizes. The sizes are pretty obvious. The N scale is about three inches across. The HO diorama, the building itself measures about six inches and the O scale, when you move up to this side, is closer to 10 inches across. So let's get that out of the way right away. Now, each uh, building is basically the same exact building. We try to keep everything true uh, and we'll tell you what's the same and we'll tell you what's not the same during this page to page. Right here I have not one, but two versions of the instructions. And you might say, well, it's the same instructions. Well, it's really not. There are changes. Uh, one, uh, one set of instructions, the HO set, which is here, is I think it's 13 to 14 pages long. And the O scale, we've gained about three or four pages. So why does that happen? We're going to talk about this. So if you're into uh, knowing a little bit about uh, the kit before you actually plunk down your very hard earned money and attempt to build this, and I have to tell you, it's not a hard kit to build. It's just, it's a little different in the technique. So you want to pay attention to this. Um, let's go through page by page. Now we're only going to focus on the HO scale version because the pages are not the same in each of the three kits and you can't go from page one here to page three there it'll get confusing so we're going to reference the ho and if there's anything different on the other scales i'll reference that too okay so let's try that when you get the kit uh you'll see you all have to unwrap a little bit the different kind of a box because the o scale is not packaged like either the ho or n scale but every box will have some sort of instructions within it and that's what you're seeing right here in this case, this is the HO one, and there's actually a picture of these, this actual model on the front of the uh, instructions. The O scale one it looks identical, except we're using the O scale model in, on the front of the instructions, so you can, you can get a better idea of exactly what you're getting into. Let's just start uh, at the very beginning. The, the front page here simply refers to a general description of the kit and what you can expect in the kit. And here again, I'm telling you right now, this, this is not a difficult kit, but it's going to take a little bit of a unique approach. Some things are not the same as other things. If you're used to clapboard, this is not a clapboard kit. The bracing will be different. The finishing techniques will be different. So stick around for this one. Uh, I'm going to literally turn to page two. The pages are not numbered. Um, but in this case, and you'll see there's more similarities and differences between these kits. Uh, by turning to the next page, you'll just see some color photos. Uh, in this case, some will be of the HO kit. Matter of fact, in this case, because it's HO, all will be of the HO kit. Sometimes we will use uh, other scales. Uh, the way we finished a model in O scale to illustrate an HO or vice versa. In this case, the pictures here that we take the time to include are very important. It's probably your best reference. It'll show you how we weather, uh, how we how we uh, position the kit in, in relation to the surroundings and so on. And it's the views and uh, surrounding uh, this page uh, of the unadorned kit. No scenery, nothing dramatic. But we do have a picture of the original here from the Franklin and South Manchester. You can blow through page two, but it's a good it's a good study. Um, next page this could change between scales okay but basically this is referencing the HO version we do uh elevations elevations are simply drawings and in the HO scale they are to scale in the O scale they are not to scale because it, it's just too big to for us to print a full scale photo or or illustration on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper but this is a great reference source and will give you some idea of what you're getting into as far as uh, complexity as far as the lines of the kit uh, without having to study a photo and try to get the nuances there are no nuances when it comes to uh, elevations it's cut and dry it's architectural uh, the next page here again and the drawings are by Jim Mooney our engineer uh, is another uh, set of views uh, here again they could be the scale they may not be the scale depending on the scale that you're in uh, we even have a top view 
And one thing you'll find is we go right from the uh, illustrated uh, architectural drawings called elevations right into the part sheets. Now, just so as you know, we try to label certain things. It's, here I have something that says rear wall or wall overlays. And each sheet of parts has this some letters and some numbers, and you may wonder what that's for. Uh, oftentimes, you'll find on this particular kit, each sheet will bear the letters D and G, and that stands for Downtown Garage. That is not so much for you as for us, because we want to make sure that we don't give you the wrong kits, I, pardon me, the wrong components, you know, in, in, in the wrong kit. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. But you'll see things like DG, Downtown Garage, LBSS or LB. LB means laser board, and that's the product that that part is made out of. Now, it should say LBSS, which some of, some of these parts are. That simply means that it's laser board, but with a sticky side on the rear of it. So it becomes self-adhesive. Uh, we also have things like TSKB. Sounds very confusing. Well, TSKB means task board. What we're building these kits out of is a special kind of a cardstock uh, framing material, similar to what you'd see in a, uh, in, in a photo uh, frame. It's a high quality uh, piece of paper, essentially, but 1 16th of an inch thick that has some texture to it. The upside of it is that we can get it in large sheets and we could, one big sheet will cover a kit like this, where is if this was, for instance, out of clapboard, no clapboard sheets are available to us this tall. The real big thing here, however, is that it is used to emulate and simulate a, uh, a masonry wall, whether it's concrete or stucco or poured, whatever it is. And this way we look like a different kind of building. If this building was made out of clapboard, which I guess it could be, it would certainly have a very different look. So using task board is going to present you with a different uh, set of circumstances as far as how to finish it and get the proper fit. Uh, in a lot of ways it's much simpler, but in some ways it's a little more complex too, especially when it comes to interior bracing, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to keep flipping around the pages here, so you know what, uh, here again, they're not going to necessarily be in the same sequence if you're not major scale. Uh, there's more than one page of parts here, again, is a secondary page of parts, okay? I know it may be difficult to see on the screen, but trust me, it's there. And then we go on to interior bracing. Now, I know there are some companies out there that really don't favor interior bracing as much as they should. Uh, to us, it's very important. No matter how we illustrate the bracing, be very careful about your gaps on the bracing. Um, we may have made a couple of mistakes on drawings. Uh, it happens. So test fit and uh, make sure everything is exactly in place and aligned before you go on to the next step. Because number one is to take the wall panels. In this case, we have, you know, the, there are actually four walls that, in this case, don't fit together at 90 degree angles. So be very careful how you place the bracing. Use some uh, yellow glue. We always use tight bond and some spring clips and make sure they dry thoroughly and make sure that when you put vertical bracing, which is in the interior of the wall, you won't see it from outside of the wall, that it's in the right place. And when once it's positioned, you want to make sure that it's perfectly flush with the end of the wall panel because if it sticks out a little bit, the piece that sits next to it, the wall that adjoins it, is going to be step that and offset and that screws up and it makes things much much tougher uh do your best to make sure it's flush uh follow up with a sanding if need be because there's going to be some finishing to high seams anyhow you want to make sure that's covered so we're talking about this and it says the placing on the interior uh the pla placing of the interior bracing is more critical in this structure than most and clearances must be observed it says so right in the instructions no big deal couple spring clips the bracing is included, and uh, and you're on your way, okay? Just be very critical. Put on your reading glasses or whatever it takes. What I did here is I wanted to uh, start with subassemblies. Now, subassemblies are the things that are often held off until the back end of the kit is being uh, assembled. In other words, the kit is basically together, and now you want to add these little things. Sometimes I get in the mood of just doing smaller projects just to get my feet wet. And sub-assemblies in this case involve uh, the signs that go around the front of the building, all these big, beautiful graphics. Uh, that's a sub-assembly. Uh, windows and doors. Now, this is one of the things that make 
the HO scale instructions smaller than the O scale instructions, not because of the scale of the kit. But unlike uh, the HO scale kit, both the O scale and the N scale kits have laser cut wooden, well, they have laser cut door and window components. They're not made out of wood, they're made out of laser board. Uh, where the HO by and large are plastic windows. So we get into the instructions uh, regarding window assembly and door assembly far deeper in both the O scale and the N scale than the HO, hence the larger instructional manual on these things. And basically you have a uh, sign assembly and a window and door assembly. And then we, do, we show basically a shell assembly. Now you have to read the words because the words on these things um, are to steer you in a comfortable uh, direction where you don't get ahead of yourself and hopefully you don't have too, too many mistakes. Remember, anything you can do can be undone. So if you put something wrong or if too, uh, a piece of bracing doesn't fit exactly as it should, peel it off, start again. Uh, being a great craftsman and working on this level sometimes requires do-overs. And uh, we've all done it and this is no exception. Now, as we get more into this kit, you're going to see that this is somewhat of a tab and slot construction. This is where a task board is very different than uh, basswood. Uh, first of all, basswood will swell, and sometimes you really do have to adjust the tab and slot it fit without question. But task board is made of many, many layers of very fine paper that are compressed together uh, to, form the, uh, to form the actual task board to the thickness of 1 16th of an inch. And task board has a, um, has a greater propensity to swell out once it gets wet than, say, a piece of basswood would. So if you choose to use the tab in slot construction, it's there for you, but you may have to open up some of the slots because the tabs, not unusually, are going to open just a little bit and swell, and the slots may have to be made larger. An alternative is to just simply remove the slots, excuse me, the tabs, and they are basically for guidance. They are not necessary, but they do really help align things. So consider your options on this before you go cutting anything apart. I know with the O scale version, uh, it was more critical than it was for me with the HO scale version. And the N scale version was actually a little bit simpler for some reason. I think I had just gotten used to the, uh, the uh, process of keying in on that tab and slot process. So we have a page here that says tabs into slots, and it says simply, and you'll see this regardless of the scale, that the first floor office, uh, which is part number six, is the overhang right here. You can see the second, the second story overhang. Um, the first floor office is part number six. Here again, lightly sanding and precise fitment is the name of the game. If you handle this correctly, all of the unsightly seams that are starting, that have started to appear, will actually start disappearing a little bit down the road. And we discuss a lot sanding. Now, sanding on this kind of a kit is very important and fitting it together exactly properly is important. And one of the things that makes it a little more complex is the fact that that front wall is at an angle. So we're not even dealing with true 90 degrees. So when you're putting one thing up against the other, we are not mitering the corners and we're going to have to bring them into alignment and help the seams literally disappear through the use of a very fine sandpaper so it's important that you have some on hand don't be afraid to lightly sand this material uh the, when, once you start doing it you'll see it's almost self-healing but it does take a few minutes and of course the paint will help with that as well um the next step is that we have a we have a, a, a this these walls are made of many laminates uh there's actually three layers on these walls before the signs you have the basic construction which is how you're going to start then once everything is placed together as a shell and everything has been sanded and it looks kind of cool, then you're going to be adding other layers. And here again, this is regardless of the scale. So keep that in mind and alignment is critical. Uh, the uh, additional layers have a self-adhesive backing. You don't have to worry about glue and over wetting these things, but you do have to make sure that you're putting them on uh, with a critical eye towards alignment. Um, and we actually get into that on the next page. And here again, it's kind of hard to see here, but I'm going to stretch out a little bit. And you can see on the upper part of this particular page, you can see panels going over the, uh, the shell of the building. Okay, right there. And on the bottom of the page, we actually illustrate, but we're not going to tell you to do this yet. We actually illustrate the posts that will hold up that first floor. So 
vehicles will be able to go under that part of the building. But it also says, and it doesn't matter here again which scale you're using, that, this, that the boards that go up and down, in this case they're one quarter by, not the boards, but the, the pilasters that go up and down, while one quarter by one quarter on um, these instructions, because the stage show vary to smaller and larger depending upon the scale that you're working with. And it says here, as viewed from the underside, you can see where the support pilasters will be located. Uh, it's a strip of basswood that should be trimmed, fit, and glued into position at this point. But not really because I think we held off on that just a little bit on ours. One of the final things we did was to paint these with the support posts installed. The building cannot be positioned upright. Now what I found was, and I think I reflect on it in the instructions, that we actually put the base piece because there is a task board base panel here that this building sits on. What I found was that it is better to trim and install those vertical pillars after the bottom part has been installed this way. There's going to be some flex that you're going to be able to work with and you want to make sure that those vertical pillars are going to fit perfectly. And um, the thing of it also is once you put the vertical pillars in, while the windows around the building, around, around the top, and I'll use the O scale here, of course it's easier to see, uh, but around this, the side and the top and the other side, are easy to get in because we haven't installed the roof yet so you can get your hands in there the windows under here are a lot easier a lot more easily installed if you have full access and you don't have the pillars in too early in the game now here again you have the original shell you have one overlay you have a second overlay here and then of course you have the sign overlay and that that is standard throughout the whole building the back of the building is not quite as complex but illustrates a typical uh, construction uh, approach to this kind of a structure okay and here you go so you can see this exactly now I can hold up the same building an HO and you'll see here again the same approach to everything and I'm gonna hold that as close as I can so you can get a pretty good look at it all right this is a totally built up diorama and then the N-scale version, there is a little difference in the N-scale version of, of, about the roof because unlike the other two buildings, we don't have a rooftop entry on the N-scale version. We just couldn't come up with something that was substantial enough not to give anybody hodger to trying to build the thing. So that's what you can expect there. So uh, when it comes to the pilasters, you can hold off a little bit. Um, the next page we go into actually installing the doors and windows here again in N and O you're going to have to pre-assemble the, the, uh, the doors and windows all of them uh, in HO some of them have to be pre-assembled but there are also plastic components that are part of that kit now keep in mind the big thing is to make sure you sand and flush and uh, and fit everything as you go along we actually used uh, a light coat of ray primer on the shell and then covered it with white but I didn't put the white on until after everything was put together because there are so many layers you certainly want to paint the shell before installing the windows which were painted on the sprues uh, prior to installing them in their openings uh, on one of the pages here and I can't tell you it depends on which kit uh, which scale you get it says read this carefully and what I had written was let me just get my glasses on for this uh, the original Explorer Views had the roof, panel, and trim installed a little bit earlier uh, than it should have been, in my opinion. Uh, when it came to installing the windows, uh, see the sub-assemblies in this case, I could, not, I could not get my fingers into the now sealed shell, and it hampered installation of the windows. Um, so I took the liberty, after I built it a couple times, uh, to add the windows and that kind of thing earlier on before adding the actual roof panel. Uh, the answer was the walls are somewhat flexible and I was actually able to pressure fit because they bend a little bit, the, the roof panel with the, with, the, with the slots on top of the wall panels that have the tabs coming up. Uh, I simply use light finger pressure uh, to bend the walls and favor them just a little bit. Uh, you can add tar paper to the roofing panel before adding the upper trim. There is an upper trim component. It's cut in one piece, pretty much. Um, on the same page, at least in the HO instructions, we also have a separate assembly of the billboard. The billboard is the same on all of these. Uh, the graphics are all included. We did use uh, either white or yellow glue to apply the paper uh, graphics. And by the way, each of the kits, now this is scale for HO, but each of the kits comes with 
a sheet of graphics just like that. Yes, we do tend to give you some extra ones. Um, not a bad idea to copy and put them on a copy machine uh, before you actually, you know, <laughs> cut them open, and cut them and cut them and find that maybe you've cut them to the wrong size. Um, the uh, the HO instructions I just showed you to give you an idea, and this is probably the most visual thing, is the HO signs are here. Let me hold that right. And the O scale signs, which are a li little bit more limited because the space are there. So you can see, and you can appreciate the difference in what we're doing here. Anyhow, there are things in the kit, such as um, TV antennas up on the roof in both the HO and O scale versions, as well as they both have upper entries. Now on the HO scale version, it is a casting for an upper stairwell into uh, entry. On the O-Scale version, it is built up and you have a separate set of instructions for that. On the N-Scale version, we had to go the other direction totally. We simply were not, were not happy with, uh, with the effort that we had to do just to do something that really you lose a little bit more in N-Scale than certainly with O-Scale. Uh, there are plenty of castings in the kit. I'm not going to go over how to paint them. The gas islands uh, that are in the H-O-1 have been duplicated and uh, will be included with both the H uh, with the O scale and N scale, so we're staying together on all of this. The kit is not tough. You're going to do some sanding. You have to be careful uh, about how you're going to paint and, and what steps the painting will be done. And frankly, this is a kit that could e be easily built in, in in a week of nights, you know, four or five nights for a really nice build. Uh, it's very colorful and it's uh, it's different, and we loved it. And we thank George Celios for letting us. Uh, copy his design on this. Uh, we, we loved it and we wanted it for ourselves, so we thought we'd share it with all of our Bar Mills customers. So that's it. Uh, this is called Page by Page or Page to Page. And um, like I say, in this case, we're hopping around because of the different, the different situation with the three different scales. And you'll be seeing that from time to time when things get this involved. So my name is Artie Fahey for Bar Mills, and it's always a great pleasure to, uh, to share some things with you and hopefully give you some insight that would be a pain in the butt to have to you know write everything down that we just talked about. So that's it for right now and thanks again from Bar Mills.